Christ Ambassadors Church presents The Singles and Couples Service with Bishop Dr. Ida B. Desai. This is a special service for those seeking marriage. Plus, it covers areas on how to find a life partner and the true definition of love, among other issues related to marriage and relationships. Get answers to all marital questions every youth, parent, and even married couples ask every day. Plus, get prophetic wisdom from the bishop as he is a fountain of overflowing practical wisdom and deeper, strong marriage secrets. The Singles and Couple Service with Bishop Dr. Ida Peterson. Father, we worship you. Father, we adore your holy name. Father, we bless you. We thank you for this opportunity to just minister this morning. I pray, Holy Spirit of God, that you will heal a home, heal a marriage, impact someone's life for the future. I pray that everything we talk about this morning will change generations. Amen. Thank you for answering us. And God's people say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There are messages people don't have the legal right to preach. When uh, an unmarried woman or an unmarried man begins to preach about marriage, you can't. You can't because <laughs> You can't, you can't learn marriage. You can't preach marriage by, ex, by head. You can't by, by revelation. Even if that's your revelation. Until you enter. A young man years ago said he wanted to study women. That women have defeated kings and princes for years. So he says he's going to travel the whole world to study women. So he set out to study women and he had a big file. And he would write, please, if the child is making noise, just move into the church so that we don't get some distractions. So he started going around the world and started writing in a big book. Women, he would go to China, women in China. He would go to Russia, women in Russia. So he was taking um, details of women around the world. So on his way back, he got to somewhere, some location near Sudan. Somewhere. He was almost home. One more country before he comes home. And they were saying the man was a Nigerian. Well, just for us, for the story to make sense. <laughs> Amen. So he got to Sudan and he was thirsty. And he told the woman, uh, please, he saw a woman by the well. He said, please, can I have some water? The woman said, no, no, what water? Can't you go and fetch your own water? So he was writing. He said, I know women. I know I've seen all the women. You are not different. The woman said, oh, well, how do you know women? He said, I've written it in my book. <laughs> so the woman said, let me see your book. Gave the woman the book. The woman looked at the book and threw the book into the well. Threw the book into the well. So you have not started. Did they tell you that a woman can throw your book into the well? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so it needs, it needs divine grace to, to, to discuss marriage which we are going to discuss this morning on relationship based listen based on scriptures it is not based on Zululand or Koza or Igbo or Chinese the right way is the way of God is that okay? Yes. So everything we're going to be speaking about today, I want you to take your culture, your, your tradition, and put it on pause. And hear the mind of God. So this morning I'm going to be speaking on the subject, <laughs> we need to talk. Amen? Amen. What's the subject? We need to talk or let's talk. Every person in a relationship or that is married 
knows that this word, this word, we need to talk or let's talk is the most frightening word any couple can say. When your wife calls you on the phone and says, babes, we need to talk. <laughs> your day is finished. <laughs> Come on, am I making sense? Or when your wife calls you or your husband calls you, so I'm coming home, we need to talk. There is nothing that you do that day that will function. Because anytime my own wife is special in this, we need to talk, because she tells me by 2 a.m. When mortal men are sleeping, when everybody thinks that Dr. Ida Peterside is in conference with God, we are communicating with God, that's what my wife will say. Babes, we need to talk. Once you hear that I need to talk, my mind will pa. Your mind will fly. Because <laughs> oh my goodness. As long as there is peace in your house, you can achieve anything in the whole planet. So when that we need to talk comes around, it distorts everything around the whole world, not just in your house. Even if you are planning to travel the next morning here, we need to talk this night. There's a possibility that that traveling will not take place. <laughs> because when the woman calls you to a conference or the man calls you to a conference, get ready. For those of you that are single, it's still the same thing. If your boyfriend says we need to talk, you will begin to imagine whether he has seen your Facebook page. Because he's calling you to say, um, uh, on that status, what, is, what did you write there? Single and searching. <laughs> well, you are single, but he's not really married. You're not married officially. But that's for the woman or somebody to put single, it irritates you. Because you need, if you love me enough, you should be able to tell the world. Am I communicating? Yes. You should be able to tell the world that you are not single. So there's conflict everywhere. In this, we need to talk. I'm going to read some scriptures. There are six problems. We're just starting for those of you that are come. Please write or we'll make sure that the video, videos or DVDs are available. In every relationship or in any marriage, there are five Problems that you must face. Is that okay? There are five problems that you must face. But I will be emphasizing on one. I will deal with the four as time allows me. Then I will centralize on one of them that I'm going to be talking about today. So there are five difficulties that everybody will encounter in a relationship or in a marriage. Whether you're 14 years, 16 years, or 60 years. The book of 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. From verse 1 to 7. Somebody say, I'm here. Yeah. If you're there in your scriptures, there are no screens today, so put, open your phones or just write it down. 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 to 7. Likewise, ye wives... Be in subjection to your own husbands. And I like that word, your own. Amen. Amen. To your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, or they are not Christians, they also may without the word be won by the conversation. Somebody say conversation. conversation. We are going to be looking at that conversation. Conversation means talking. He says, unbelieving men, by how you discuss with them, by how you talk to them, can be won over, not by the soup you cook, not by the stew you make, not by the makeup you wear. Now, so many people think 
that their relationship or their marriages will work because they wear mascara. We are not, okay, let me say from the man part of you. Most men are not moved. Mascara is good when we go out together. When we go to the mall, you can wear mascara. It's okay. But when you are in the house, I don't need mascara. I need you. Am I communicating? So, so many people get the things wrong. They get it wrong. They talk about um, Fendi bags and they talk about Gucci shoes and they talk about um, um, Mary Kay. I'm trying now. Come on, somebody. They talk about the Mary Kay. They talk about the Gucci shoes. And every one of them is emphasizing on these things. But the Bible says that by your conver conversation, by your words, or by your communion, or by your communication, you can save the man. Or the man can save the woman. Look at how the Bible deals with things. But, and what we are seeing in this generation it's not what the Bible is saying. It's talking about how much you are making. It's talking about which company you're working with. A girl came to see me the other day and said, I need to leave my husband. I said, why? He said, I am earning more money than him. So he's not taking care of the home. I said, I said Mama, uh, but let me just say something that you might not like. She said, what? I said, you're foolish. You are genuinely foolish because if God blesses you or blesses the, whoop, the man, is it not your family? So why are, you, why are you separating yourself now because you earn more money? Why do you call the man um, uh, irresponsible because he is, you're earning, he's earning 5000 you're earning 50000 What defines your home? Is it the money you make? And that's the society we live in. It's unfortunate that what defines our homes is not lo no longer our conversation or our lifestyle. That word really should mean not just talking, it should mean our lifestyle. Our lifestyle should be able to, when you enter, some, your, somebody enters your house, the atmosphere in your house is like heaven. So he said, you wives, don't you know that by your conversation, every time I have dealt with counseling, 90% of the time is the women that come to complain about their husbands. But they don't know that while I am sitting there, I am representing the men. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> you can Amen. Amen. <laughs> You cannot confuse me. Because me too, I have a woman in my house. And I know by the grace of God the characteristics of women. Women are the same whether they're anointed or not anointed. Or. We are going to be dealing with somebody shout, I'm here. We are going to be looking at these things and I believe by the Spirit of God because God called this meeting. I believe that when you leave this place, the peace you will have the joy you have, it's, it's, it must be, it's unspeakable. Am I talking to somebody? Yes. Amen. So, so let's finish reading the scriptures, verse 2. He says, while, that's what we're talking about, he's talking about wives now, addressing the wives to get to the husband. He says, he's addressing the wives now, he's addressing the women. He said this, verse 2. He said, while they behold your chest conversation coupled with fear, unbelievable. He said, while the man is beholding your chaste conversation. The word chaste there means pure. The word chaste there means what? Pure. pure. Those of you behind, can you hear me? If you can hear me, say I'm here. I'm here. He says, while the man beholds your chaste conversation, your pure conversation, he says, the man is observing you. He's looking at your countenance. He's looking at your chaste conversation. That the words that are coming out of your mouth are pure. Then see what will happen. He says, while they behold your chaste, whose adorning is not by the outward adorning of plating Brazilian. 
is there in the Bible? Did you see it in the Bible? <laughs> no, look at it. You saw it. <laughs> he says, The man is not moved. It's in your Bible. Is there? You think I'm lying? <laughs> He says, your husband is not moved by the outward adorning or the plating of hair. So, some of you should just be taking up those things you're wearing. Just, <laughs> let's, let's see the real you here. My God. Okay, scriptures are coming. Thank you for the scriptures. Whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of the plating. This is ATV, we're live on ATV. Or plating the hair and the wearing of bling bling. Amen? The, the wearing of gold and jewelry, the second one I can't see that well. Or the what? Or the what? Of the fine clothes. You remember I mentioned, now, everything about Fushini and Gucci has been disqualified <laughs> by the Bible. So, if some of you, you have been centralized and you put the man under pressure, I will get there, you put the man, I need, I need Gucci, I need hair, even the Bible said, don't go there. Who <laughs> So if your problem is that your husband is not buying you gold or making your hair or buying you new clothes, the Bible has disqualified you. No, no, no. I just read the scriptures. He says, let it not be, let it not be, let that not be the focus of any relationship. Our young girls have lost everything. They've lost their dignity. They have lost their prestige because of mobile phone. But it says, let your beauty not be about what's up. Let it not be about phones and about... No, the Bible is clear. So if this is what you're chasing, who is driving a BMW like my little girl here yeah, loves cars. If she sees cars, she shakes. I say, God help you and help the car. <laughs> let your adorning, let your mind not be above these things. Now, if you begin to delete these things, have you seen that marriage will get better? You are narrowing it down. Because what has happened in our relationships, we have used these things, these things, to cloud the marriage, to oppress the relationship, to suppress. I'm, I will get back to the men, so don't think the Bible will not deal with that. You understand? So we have missed, we have, we have missed the essence of relationship. And the real essence of relationship has always been one thing, companionship 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 that has always been the essence let's read down, this is not even my teaching I said I was going to close by 12 but it must be by 12.30 because you came late we started at 10.30 for man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of the king. Isn't it? So we are eating the word here. Okay, verse 4. Let it be the hidden man, it talks about the heart, in which there is no corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit. My goodness. The meek and a quiet spirit. Only very few men, like Dr. Ida Peter Sai, can publicly say my wife has a meek and a quiet spirit. Very few men. And this is what God expects in a marriage. Some women are tigress and tiger joined together. <laughs> Some men are elephant and lion and leopard 
and crocodile join together. The big five. You cannot enjoy marriage or any form of relationship if you are the big five. Listen to me. There is everything you learn, you cannot learn. Most of us learn things from our parents. That does not make it right. Most of our daughters learn things from their mothers. That does not make it right. You can unlearn. Amen. Amen. You can unlearn. You can unlearn. You can unlearn being harsh. You can unlearn being angry. I used to be an angry man that before you talk to me, I slap you. No, that was my life. But I'm not sure I've slapped anybody. Let me check really. You understand? I'm not sure. I'm not sure I've touched, slapped anybody in the last 25 years or 20. No, no. I'm lying. Let me bring it down. In the last 16 years, just to be safe. That's when I started ministry. That's, <laughs> I'm not sure I've slapped anybody. I just because I'm trying to speak, I remember I slapped one boy in his gate. <laughs> <laughs> I really did, I did, I did. Even as a Christian. He was accusing me unjustly as we were talking, my body was shaking. That's how it used to be. My body was shaking. I said, God, you know, I'm a Christian and I had a voice. I'm not sure it was God. The voice said, just lay hands on him. Lay hands on him. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I read that in, in his gate in the mall. We were talking we were about four of us. He was talking, he was accusing me and, mm-hmm. unnecessary. And I was shaking. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and I went home and I cried. I really cried. I cried. I said, God, no, you can't do this to me. I thought I had changed. So these days, when my body begins to do that vibration, I begin to speak in the spirit. Hold up, oh, shanda, blada, yara, blada, deria, la, blada, blada. Which means you cannot learn. You cannot learn. I'm, I'm grace. My wife, have I ever touched you? Amen. It's not that there are no reasons sometimes. <laughs> now, now, that's why I'm saying that you can change. You can change. The other day, you know, uh, my little girl here is with us now, so we're discussing at home. Then I said, no, I'm a very gentle man, and uh, I hardly shout at anybody, and I made a mistake, and I went and asked uh, Jackie. Jackie's helping Mama now. And I said, Jackie, you know me, have I? <laughs> Jackie said, <clears throat> I, in my calculation, I forgot that Jackie used to work in the office. <laughs> Jackie used to work in the office, so when I come to this office, it's fire. Yeah, no, you must be. But now she's home, it's a different person. So when I said, she said, <clears throat> I said, what are you, you am I? She said, <clears throat> Because even the puppy herself has never seen me that way. But I forgot. Then I asked my wife, what about, my wife said, mm. <laughs> My wife said, well, but we're all trying, we're all working, working towards <laughs> perfection, amen. <laughs> the Bible said, be thou holy. He didn't say you are holy, oh. Be thou. Be. He said it's a process. Okay, so there are five things. That, please, when you get home, you read the scripture so that I can teach quickly. There are five challenges that everybody will face in marriage. I will discuss one. I will mention four. I will jump into the four, then we'll get into the main one. 
Number one challenge that everyone will face in a relationship. Number one, money. Number one is what? Money. Money. The finances has been one of the greatest challenges that people face in their relationship. And the reason why there are two basic reasons. One, because things are difficult. Or secondly, the man is stingy. <laughs> uh, uh, the women say, huh? Yeah. Now, you know, not that really, I will come to the day. I told you I'm a man. The problem with women sometimes, not problem, the challenge, with women when it concerns money is that women, every time they see money, they feel money must be spent. Every time they see money, they hear that money came in or salary. They, they have spent it before it hits your pocket. <laughs> now, now, that's the biggest problem, including my, my wife. <laughs> Amen? Amen? That's the challenge with women. But the point with a man is the man is afraid of the future. Amen. Or the men say, hoo-ha. The man is afraid of the future. So if 10,000 comes to a man, the woman has divided it by herself. Two for me. Two for you. Two for groceries. The other two for this. Then the other two, maybe we save. But with the man, when ten comes in, he holds the ten. His mind is, what if next month I don't have? So the man is thinking long term. The woman is thinking short term. If mistakenly the woman knows that the money is in the bank, she has satanic irritation. <laughs> Something, when she sees the sh a shoe, she calculates the 10,000. When you say there's no money, but she says it's only 400. She's calculating your 10,000 and minusing 400. But for a man, the man is thinking future. The man is thinking rent. The man is thinking an emergency that is not there. What if something happens? I cannot, because most men, when we start, we start very rough. We start with one room. Sometimes we're attached with people when we come from Zimbabwe. You know what I mean? When you cross the border, it's not easy. In that thinking, he's curtailed. It's not that most times men are stingy. You understand? Because ask my wife, I can save money for 10 years. Because, oh yes, I have seen poverty. I will never go back there. <laughs> so my planning is guarding me. Am I telling the truth? My planning is guarding me. I'm already planning two years and three years and four years. So sometimes they call the man stingy. But the man is not really stingy. The man is thinking. School fees, everybody do. Man, he said, hey, my children are coming home for, for, for holiday. The man is thinking how they'll go back. <laughs> Come on now. The man is thinking how they will go back. You, you are rejoicing that the students, I'll be with my kids. My kids are going to be around me. Hey. He's thinking these kids, when they go back, they will buy shoe, they will buy this. So at that time, when you tell him, hey, he said, ah, no money. There's no money. He said, what kind of stingy man? The man is not really stingy. He's planning the future. Am I making sense? I'm telling you about money, how we deal with money so many times. You understand? There are accounts that I don't touch. I don't even, I'm already thinking when I'm 90. Some of you might call it somehow, but this is how we plan. So it's not that the man is stingy, but sometimes... The problem with money, and again, why people fight about money is that we don't cut our coat according to our size. The problem is that we don't cut our coat according to our size. We cut our coat according to our expectation. You don't cut your coat according to your expectation. I'm hoping that next year, 
Then you start buying suits of 16,000 when your salary is 17,500. Let me buy this suit so that when I'm, a, when I'm made a bishop in five years, I will. No, no, you don't think that way. Amen? So most challenges with money can really be handled. And when the money is not there, you must get to the point to understanding that the money is not there. And the men don't be afraid to be transparent. And that's why the women sometimes complain. Tell them black and white. This money, my wife knows every cent I have in my account. Hopefully. You know that? And that's the truth. So I'm transparent with her. And in being transparent with her, I can now say, this is for this, this is for this, this is our savings, this is what we're planning. Money should not really be an issue in a relationship. When there is money, the man should make you enjoy it with, 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 with him. When there is no money, don't walk away. Don't get angry. Don't get bitter. If it is easy, go and bring your own money. Let's chop. Bring your own money. My wife tells me a man's money is sweet. I said, is it not the same color, the same money? He said, hey, no. You see? And, and unfortunately for her, I have a bank account. We'll get into the shop, say, my baby, I like this dress. I said, take it. She said, hey. I said, I have your card. I said, I have your card. She said, hey. I think the dress is too expensive. It's expensive now because uh, I'm paying. <laughs> so money is a problem. Number two challenge in in a, 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 in home, please control those kids, man. They, they give them something to suck. Number two, sex. I hope everybody's 16 to 18 or something. There's no, man, there's no 12-year-olds and 10-year-olds there. Are there any ones there? Anyway, these little ones who not understand English will be decoding. <laughs> <laughs> will be decoding the word. Amen. Amen. Sex. Sex or lovemaking, maybe better put, is a big challenge. It's become a big challenge. And the reason why it has become a big challenge in most relationships, eh? In most marriages, not relationship. When we talk sex now, we eliminate singles. You are not supposed to have it. You are not supposed to get there. I know you did it years ago, but now if you do it, you are going to hell. <laughs> it is. If I tell you the genesis of sex or love making, it will shock you. Maybe you should hear the genesis of love making and sex. God put. The Haman, the Haman, Haman or something, they call Haman in the woman. God put the Haman in the woman. And in the eyes of God, the Haman he puts in the woman, that's when a woman is this virgin and a woman begins to bleed. No human being on earth, not even God, is permitted to get there. Nobody on earth. It is a preservative or it is preserved for a person that will enter into a divine contract with you. It is preserved for a person that will enter into a divine contract. Hear what I just said. I said divine contract. Now what happens, what happens is, especially for a virgin, that on the day of your marriage, on the day of your marriage, that should be the first time that the man, I'm just showing you, I see the genesis of what it is all about. 
when the man penetrates the woman, it is, listen now, please, well, we're on TV, but we, we, we. the private part of the man is like a pen. It is like a pen that is supposed to sign a signature. Amen? Amen? That is supposed to sign a signature. And when in the day of your marriage he signs the signature, what happens is that the woman begins to bleed. The woman's bleeding is it's the covenant. It is the, the blood that seals the covenant. Because the blood now clouds the man and clouds the woman's private part as a signature of a covenant. The blood. Everything is about blood. So that blood is an eternal signature approved by heaven. That this intercourse or this marriage has now been sealed by blood. That is why there is no woman on earth that ever forgets the person that slept with her first. No woman on earth. Scientists have proved that any man that disvirgins you can sleep with you again even in 50 years from then. Even if you're married. Even if you have except the blood. That's why we need the blood of Jesus. Any man that disvirgins you, even if you're married 10 years ago, if he comes back, something in you cannot resist him. Why? Because there is an eternal covenant that you entered. But thanks God, thank God for the blood of Jesus. The Bible said the blood of Jesus wipes away. So that's why we tell the young girls. That's why we emphasize on what we teach. And when you get saved, the Bible says, you are now a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become what? New. Now, the, the wickedness of Satan is that even though you have become new, God says you are now a new creature. So in the eyes of God, you are now a virgin. Most people still go back again. To rewrite another covenant. It is not right. It is not about what they're preaching and teaching these days in the society where we live in. You understand, sex has become liberal. There's nothing liberal about this. There's nothing liberal about this. Now, let's get down to relationship of marriage. Your body belongs to the man. Your body belongs to the man, and your body belongs to the woman. There are medical issues and medical times where you can keep away and where you can restrain yourself due to medical issues. And now the great, the big challenge, again, is that so many men have a high drive, or so many women have a high drive. A pastor came to me, a pastor's wife came to me the other day to speak to me, and uh, he said, I'm leaving this marriage. I said, why? He said, my husband has not touched me in six months. I was so sad. And I called the young man. I said, what is the matter with you? The man said, no, I'm always in the mountain. I said, which mountain? He says, I'm always in the mountain. I said, in the mountain there, are you sleeping with Mary? Are you sleeping with Mary Magdalene or Mary, the mother of Jesus? Which of them are you, are you in a relationship with there in the mountain? I say, you're a foolish man. I say, you're a foolish man. Do, is there a medical challenge? Is there a problem? I say, no. Sometimes there are challenges. There are medical challenges. There are physical challenges. And there are different desires. Most times the women complain about the men in most instances. It is always very rare. 
It is easy always to have sex, have sex when you are dating. When you are dating, you are still in it. What you steal is sweet. When you are dating, every time the man, woman, man sees you, he wants to have sex. Every time the man sees you, he wants to have sex. The reason is because it is satanic. It is satanic. So that demonic urge is no longer, it's, it's lost. My friend, when you get married, the picture changes. And all the men say, hoo-ha. <laughs> and all the married women say, hoo-ha. Uh, say like us, uh, help us. Uh. <laughs> because every time you hit the woman man like this, the man say, hey. Except you are Johnson. They must say, come, leave now. I just, because the man's mind is not like he doesn't love you. It's not that he doesn't want you. Anyway, he has to really have a balance. The truth about it, like I've told you earlier, the man is always a hunter. Even when your husband is with you on the bed, he's thinking of the next client, the next business. By two o'clock, I need to meet John. John, I need to, I need to close this deal. But the woman, has, she's fresh, she's waiting. Her mind is at peace. Her emotions are running haywire. She's just... <laughs> Your husband is coming. But as the husband is coming with his briefcase, as he's dropping his bag, he's thinking of movement the next morning. So sometimes, it confuses his hormones. This is, real, this is reality. But as a man too, you must get to the point or the point to understand that the woman needs to be satisfied. I'm not saying go and do a timetable. <laughs> you you get it on Monday, you get it on Wednesday, you get it on Sunday after church. You don't need to do a timetable. You need to prepare yourself for this. Sometimes when people begin to get older, the interest, you understand? The interest begins to wear down, which should not be. Sometimes you need to ask God for grace. But what we're saying basically is that you should not deny one another. You should not deny one another. Number what now? Three. Number three, family. We're talking about problems we have in relationships and in marriages. Family. I've been asked so many times, I've been asked, okay, there are four, four of them we're looking at. I've been asked so many times about this particular issue, about family, in-laws, and whatever you, you have. We are in an African, uh, um, African uh, setting. And in the African setting, marriage is different from the European setting. Even if you are colored, even colored is worse than us. The colors are communal. So when you marry one colored woman, you marry the whole community. <laughs> no, it's true. Anybody that is, looks light in complexion can just walk into your house and say, Hey, who can that? Who can that? <laughs> who can that meet you? Once you hear, Who can that? Who can that? Hey, my bro, my bro. Hey, hey, T, T, T. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's the community. Colored community every Sunday, they are doing braai outside. Even the colored people passing by the side, by the way. Hey, Portugos, there's Portugos. Then they play that thing. What's that thing? There's that thing they play. Yeah? <laughs> Just in the slap. It has dots, 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 dots. They move it. Dominos. Eh? Dominos. Eh? The men are playing dominos there. The women are gossiping that side. Then the lonely man is, one of the lonely men is doing the bride. <laughs> so if you marry a colored person, you marry the whole community. If you marry a black person, you marry the whole family. That's our culture. So, it is important that for those of you now that are not married, you cannot write off your family in the time when you want to get married. 
or else your marriage will be frustrated. You can wake up one day and see Jack somewhere and say, Jack, let's go to home affairs. And marry. That's not how we marry in Africa. So you must understand that the African man or the African woman will be involved in your relationship. Amen, somebody? Amen. Your mother-in-law, your father-in-law, your uncles, your cousin, your distant, dist even now, now that I became famous, everybody knows me. He died, I say, hey, he said, hey, I'm your, you, you not, might not know me. I'm a Felicia. Felicia's uh, uncle, auntie, and hey. Just that I'm on TV. One called me the other day from somewhere, my mother, my mother's place. He died. I said, hey. when you shout my name like that, I pause. Because you're not even calling me with respect. No bishop, no apostle. <laughs> he died. I said, hello. Hey. He, hello. He are saying hello. He, and now maybe they're calling me with all their friends around. And the, and the thing is on speaker. They have said, that's my uncle. That, I know him. is my brother. And in my place, they don't say uncle, auntie. They say my brother. Yeah. Or my sister. They don't go to the details of uncle and auntie and all that. They don't even tell the person, I knew you. Ah. No. That's my brother. So she calls me. Yeah. Oh, oh. In our language, say, it's me. I say, okay. <laughs> Who are you? Hey, see how you're talking. <laughs> like you don't know me again. <laughs> I'm in South Africa. I can't see your face. And you're calling me from one location in the village somewhere. But I, all of a sudden, you know, I, have to, I, know, I know I'm an African. I hear voices around me. I say, uh, which of you now? Uh, oh, me, Dina. I say, hey, who's Dina again? Hey, 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 you hear? Hey, I thought you didn't know me again. You know, just to stop the embarrassment, I said, Please, please, please. I'm, I'm in something, you know, I'm a pastor. I'm just, there's, there, call me, oh, call me, call me. Oh. I say, Yeah, yeah, you know that. So listen to me. So some of you that are young and this generation, you will have problems if you don't include family. You have big problems if you don't include family. But that does not mean that your family must run your life. That does not mean that your family must run your marriage. Am I talking to somebody? A man is a weak man. Somebody say weak. weak. You are a weak man if you allow your cousin, your mother, your auntie to come into your home and go to your kitchen. Except you are lazy. Hello. If you allow your mother more, you hear what I'm saying? I know you love your mom. If you allow your mother, your auntie, your cousin to walk into your kitchen and take over your kitchen, the place of your wife, you are heading towards disaster. The kitchen belongs to your wife. If your uncle, or even if your uncle, your mother, your auntie, comes to you and say, what kind of food your, is your wife cooking? Tell her, leave now. Go to, there's a, a shop right around there. Go and eat there. Buy your own food there. This food that my wife is cooked is the best food in the whole universe. There is no food like this one. This one I'm eating. This is how I like it. It tastes like heaven. Amen, somebody. Amen. The problem where we have these problems and we allow people to invade our homes. Amen. 
we allow people to take over our marriages and in doing that, we criticize either our husband or our wives in, the, in, in presence of our family members. We can't do that. When I married my wife, I gave her a word, I told her something. I said, you never, even if I'm wrong, you never say I am wrong in front of anybody, not even auntie, auntie, uncle. Even if your opinion is wrong against mine, keep it. If you don't want to lie, don't talk. But if you want to lie, lie very well here now. <laughs> is your, how is your husband? Is he taking care of you? Huh? That man. I have never seen a more useless man in my life like that man, that husband of mine. You can't do that. You will have problems in your marriage. You are, you are a homekeeper for a woman. You don't even go to the neighbor to discuss. While you are borrowing sugar, you are talking, hey, my husband, even sugar, come back. He has not paid, we have not paid rent four months. You can't tell somebody that. You must cover your husband's nakedness. Even if your wife can't cook. My wife is an expert chef. But it wasn't like that in the beginning. No. <laughs> but now that she has saved, now that she became better, but that I was still hiding. When she gives me food, the salt is too much. I say, babes. I say, when you went to the market today, did they, did they distribute salt for free? <laughs> <laughs> And she will say, she will say, oh, the salt is too much. I say, I'm, I don't, I'm not saying that. I just, I just think there's excess salt in the house. And, uh, but as a wise woman, she understood. Amen. Amen. Your family is you, your hot wife, and the children. That is what family is. I will never give any of my family member bigger or higher money than I can give my wife. In short, not even my wife. I cannot give any living human being. Yes. And any time I want to give my family members money, I talk to my wife. The good thing is I have a good wife, gentle, meek wife. Some of, sometimes some husbands are running from you because if they give once, you go and bring a, your own family list. What of my mommy? What of my daddy? No. So I conversed with her. I told her, I said, look, oh, there's this challenge in our home. She said, hey. Even she even puts me under pressure. Have you given mama money this month? Give them money. Give them this. I said, no, this I've planned. But you see, that's why you must have a good and a gentle and a meek wife. Some are, some are cantacorous. Some are aggressive. Some are, oh, Jesus of Africa, help me. Some are... You cannot enjoy your home like that. You cannot always be antagonistic. So, you know, I ask women, what are you looking for in your husband's phone? Yeah, uh -huh, I mean. <laughs> what you are looking for, you will find. You will find. These days, men are decoding. Women are decoding. You know, you see a man trying to put a girlfriend's name, you will put Elijah. Let me see, let me see how you will know whether <laughs> the next girlfriend will be Elisha. <laughs> it's wrong. I'm not saying they should do that. But you see, any relationship that is not built on trust. You can't be suspicious all the time. Can't be suspicious. There are people that are clean. You know, sometimes we push the woman to the hand of a man, or we push the man into the hand of a woman. Every relationship must be based on trust and be transparent. You understand? Sometimes I receive a call from a lady, my friend. I say, Ah, how are you? I say, I'm here with Emmy. She doesn't know where Amy is. I say, Amy, 
This is my friend. Uh, we used to be in school together. She just called me. She's gone. Ah, okay. But some of you, when that phone call comes, you look left. <laughs> you, look, you, you look right. He said, Jimmy, just, just be talking. Let me go to the toilet. Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're, a cr- you're a criminal. You're a thief. You're a thief. Negative. It must be transparent. Amen, somebody. It must be very transparent. So we have to handle. There are so many men. There are so many men that are that are. There are so many men that are mommy's boys. You need to grow. Amen. Amen. You are you are a weak you are a weak man. Mom, your mom says. Hey, where are you? Is that me, Joe Beck? Hey, you need to come to Zimbabwe tomorrow. Amen. Okay, mommy, I'm coming. Mommy, I'm coming. I hope everything is okay. Mommy, I'm coming. Hey, come and grow up there. Grow up. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave to his wife. Some of you just carry all your uncles. Have you been to some houses? First cousin is there. Second cousin is there. Third cousin is there. Fourth cousin is there. When will you be naked for once in your house? Where? Where? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> when will you as the men sometimes you want to be free you understand you want to just walk naked you and your God the, the way God created you in his image after his likeness you just want to walk free free you understand and sometimes the wife too just let's, let's be like Adam and Eve let's just Yes, but everywhere there is uncle, auntie from, auntie from Zimba, auntie from Polokwane, uncle from uh, from uh, Luseto. This auntie from hey, the wife can't breathe, and the wife is expected to cook food for this, take care of this, take care of the. It kills, um, it kills the marriage. It kills the beauty, the fun of the whole thing. Some they say, uncle, you are going. Auntie, you are going. Cousin, <sighs> you go to work and they begin to analyze the woman. They begin to say her soup is not nice, her rice, her rice is not cooked, her this is not. Put on undue pressure. Well, family is good. Family is good, but they must have a boundary. The Singles and Couple Service with Bishop Dr. Ida Peterson.